series already there on screens and what a great spirit you are in thank you so much uh, for joining us ladies and gentlemen here we have mr a bala subramanian managing director and ceo for aditya billa sun life amc limited and chairman for amfi and he's going to talk about being future ready uh, what this future entails and how can you prepare yourself and how can you be ready to take it head on uh, so ladies and gentlemen without any further ado i would like to invite uh, bala again and would request him to start with his talk Sure. Thanks, thanks, Shobha, and um, and Divi asked me to uh, present in this forum. And today, after listening to all of you, I realized uh, I'm in front of all of you who are uh, hardcore marketing and brand professionals. And speaking among all of you, I thought I'll be the little odd man out. But in any case, as a business leader, you have to get ready for uh, digital transformation. Then be ready for the future. Right? That something is an ongoing happen. Unfortunately, when I drive, I'm free as a chairman. I do realize that a lot can be done in the digital space, uh, and, um, and 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 that can potentially become the way of life as we move forward. I have few slides of presentation, and um, then we'll have a few and a coming from the other colleague. I think just to look at a coincidence. Today, the budget has emphasized a lot on uh, digital India, and that's something government has been doing it for um, I think quite some time, the last almost seven eight years, preparing right from Aadhaar to UPI and the way I think GST is still evolving. There are many areas I think the the uh, I think the government of India itself has been creating a digital infrastructure and creating the mindset. That how India has to move. Often I do this. I say this uh, in terms of adoption in the industry when I speak in a public forum. Clearly, two things that actually change the whole adoption. One is the demonetization that happened. That is the time people realized uh, there is no choice, of course, but to use Paytm and so on and so forth. Therefore, people got used to adapting to the uh, UPI-based platform for payment uh, banking. And uh, that actually created a revolution in the whole industry. And second, the uh, government of India itself has allocated uh, such a huge resources for making India go digital. Uh, the first and foremost, I do visit some of my villages. Clearly, I see the digital adaptation. When the village panchayat actually is far higher, which again is comes on the back of the way the digital infrastructure is being built for the country as a whole. And um, the second, of course, is the the last six months has been the wave of the startup companies. In fact, all of us are investors as mutual fund players, invest in some of the tech companies. Clearly, some of them would have never imagine as a platform. Yeah, I have seen internet uh, bubble in those days where we always to value on the base of the eyeballs. And then moving away from that, now becoming an e-commerce kind of platform. So one of the things made me realize, I think, the relevance of these platforms are increasingly becoming more and more important. The whole system from the consumer point of view. Therefore, uh, the way I think these digital platform get adopted is purely on the basis of relevance. So this is why I think um, I just recall the um, Nandan Elikani's presentation. Of course, I was part of the digital committee of uh, SEBI when Nandan Elikani was leading when uh, UK Sena was the chairman. I used to clearly, he actually used to make all of us to contribute and that's why I used to learn some of the digital aspirations. And um, that is the time he used to speak about the smartphone. I think clearly if, if one looks at what he says, the digital is no longer an option. Digital actually gives you only the optionality, whether you want to, whether you like it or not, don't like it, one has to adapt. But clearly from adaption point of view, um, three core pillars, agility, resilience, innovation, I think all of them have to be a continuous process rather than one of kind, I do it. While doing that, clearly from organization point of view, and then making digital front is no longer is enough and making an automation airline again is not an optional. Many times when I, of course, used to discuss within my own team that automation actually is the key to the success. And majority of the time, people don't used to get adopted to the automation for simple reason. The moment you adapt to the automation, clearly the workload comes down, therefore, so much abandon will get created. 
one may wonder actually what to do with the bandwidth. That's why I think the innovative approach comes in terms of bringing in the way of a new life. And that being the case, I think the whole journey is not restricted only to think about digital, think about automation. It's all about the continuous change in the mindset of people, as well as change the, the way one wants to actually adapt to the new platform, new age platform, and accelerate the learning curve of the organization. Among many things that actually remains key. In order to make this happen, I was just looking at the way I think the uh, digital adoption is happening. As I just mentioned, while Daemon actually created a huge adoption to the digital platform, I think clearly from the um, from from the uh, from the global market point of view, I think there has been a significant acceleration uh, that we are uh, witnessing in terms of. Uh, uh, pre and post COVID crisis, uh, that I think is a big boon that has come in the digital platform. I think I still remember um, uh, Nadella making a statement that the pandemic has actually advanced the uh, digital adaptation by almost four or five years. He said two years, but I think it looks like to me is that is actually is actually advanced. And most of the time, I actually get postponed. There's only area where it got advanced by about three or four years which again now reflects on the way adaptation has happened. And the next slide, if you see, um, I think India clearly is the winner in the space. The, the, the science, if you look at the chart, um, I think uh, India in terms of adaptation, fully digital versus remote and assisted digital, fully digital is 88%, whereas China seems to be quite ahead of us, at least in the look point of view and the way they behave. Clearly, China is actually about 85% only, as second 80%. So one of the things that I have realized over a period of time, uh, I think India seems to be the, though we adopt things later, little late compared to the global economy, they're definitely the fast learner. I think when it comes to the question of implementing things, I think we run faster than most of the economy. This I learned when telecom industry uh, was actually getting into the country. Uh, definitely the adaptation of telecom in India actually far superior and faster than what you have seen in US or Europe or China. I think that is what I think India seems to have got adopted to the digital technology quite extensively. Again, in, the, in, this, in the same space, while of course everybody talks about uh, mobile is the way of going, I remember, uh, I remember as MP chairman, I had a brief discussion, uh, brainstorming discussions with Google Raji, Rajan Anandan. And then we were making a business plan actually and how the, the mutual fund industry can become larger in the system. And at that time I was driving as a mutual fund CIE advertisement, I was driving it for Densu and um, the entire team, Divya has been part of that whole journey. And when I had a discussion, uh, Rajan Anandan, you mentioned about, well, what do you think of the growth rate of your industry? I just mentioned to him, I expect the industry grow about 20-20%. And then he asked me actually how many number of investors are there in the industry? Is about 2.5 crores unique customer they have. Then he laughed at me and said that, well, I think your imagination is very poor. And I asked him why. He said, well, 2.5 crores customer base, whereas there are about 65 crores mobile uh, platform owners, whereas you have only 2.5 crores unique customer base. Just imagine, uh, even if you go to 100% every year, you'll not be able to reach the 65 crores investor base. Therefore, you must think bigger. And that's something if you look at it, uh, in, the, in terms of uh, the mobile getting connected overseas and everywhere, clearly the, the, the revenue that is coming from mobile platform on the digital side, the earlier speakers spoke about, in the sometimes he was spoke about, clearly the ad revenue spend has been growing, thanks to, of course, the e-commerce the platform, which Nathan Ilkani talks about, the OTT platform actually is more stronger than the base platform like telecom. I think that's something has brought the revolution the whole digital platforms. The next, of course, is the customer behavior. Clearly, uh, with the more and more platform coming in, adaptation is becoming now real, uh, whether it is the education, whether it is the e-commerce, uh, whether it is to um, uh, electric vehicles and so on and so forth. I think everywhere the adaptation and now is I think it's significantly changing. Customer behavior is changing. Is no more the analytic of uh, data. It doesn't come on the base of uh, the analyzing the address and so on and so forth. The entire behavior is coming from how the customers are um, behaving while uh, dealing with the digital platform and where all the firm operate. Interestingly, one of the platform, 
I was actually tracking it uh, coming from south, southern part of India. Created a platform for uh, transactions in mutual funds and stock market. And I casually asked him, since you come from a south background, uh, can I assume that you have a large pool of customer base coming only from Chennai and Bangalore and, and Hyderabad? And he interestingly made a comment that I think both the, all the three markets are not using my platform as much as I see this coming from Punjab, Chandigarh, it's mainly Chandigarh, and some parts of Northern India actually have a large customer base. Then actually the customer base coming from uh, their own market. I think clearly the uh, the customer behavior, I think the way the analytical now is being done, clearly I think is now it seems to be the way of building the business rather than the traditional way of doing analysis of the data on the basis of it build the business. Clearly from the, the future ready point of view, well, of course, my own belief is that next slide is it is an ongoing thing at the end of the day, is an ongoing thing. I think while building the business. Um, this is something uh, making it a part of the organization that digital way of running the business, I think, is uh, will be the key. And that's something while creating the mindset. I think clearly creating the user experience, just to give there are many, of course, points are put here. Uh, I think the user in, in, interface and experience. When I was talking to one of the leading um, the software firm um, in India, and, um, and I was generally checking with them that you guys are of course good in creating a platform. How do I ensure that user interface and experience is actually made the best? And interestingly, the person of course is the head of the software business in India, large, large organization. And he, she said that, well, there's always a challenge in creating the user interface and experience, not just only in India, even globally. Therefore, you need to have a different kind of talent pool uh, who comes with a completely different experience in creating the customer experience. That something is again become very, very key. Well, of course, we can talk about ease of doing business and so on and so forth and creating different kind of OPI. The second is from a model point of view, I think all of us are now started believing and breathing that we should be the digital first in terms of approach. Unless we set that as a roadmap, clearly the adaptation to the new age technology platform is, is not going to be that much easy. And the same way, I think most of the time, um, I think majority of the people uh, do believe that that one has to create their own platform by themselves. Um, I also, of course, evaluating some of the options that the partnership model would also be another way to build more, not necessarily API, all such things, actually the FinTech platform is all about the platform that you create and then you actually join as a partner, the way Microsoft is built globally, become a partner for every uh, user in the country. Therefore, the partnership model, how it actually is built, is also something uh, extremely important in, in, in building the uh, digital business. The last, of course, the media business, I think the entire the media space, of course, I do get involved on the Mitchell Fund CIA uh, as currently the IMF chairman. And even for my own business, I do spend a lot of time in terms of how do I actually build our own brand in the new age technology platform. Clearly, I think the way the media as a business which we run right from print to TV to um, digital medium, I think clearly the, um, the, 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 the digital medium seems to be the, the growing uh, platform from the point of view of uh, uh, creating awareness about the product, create the right experience, and, uh, and creating uh, the entire visibility actually for the brand that something seems to be again becoming the new way of uh, building a business. The same time, um, uh, the same time with respect to the media, clearly again, uh, we have we have on the basis of last five years of experience. Uh, given the fact that India is a vast uh, country, and uh, people actually speak different kind of languages, therefore making it uh, from uh, English and Hindi to um, local languages, given the fact that adaptation of uh, digital technology platform is now is increasingly uh, becoming in every language. And that is being the case, I think making the entire, the reaching to the customers through the media plan, uh, through the um, through this um, regional level also becoming extremely uh, key. And uh, last, of course, um, in terms of business model, I think clearly um, the way uh, India has now transformed the um, the entire digital world, Aadhaar, uh, with, of course, with respect to the identity, and now talking about the privacy, ensuring, the data security also is taken care because one of the bigger war which I'm now feeling that could happen is the digital war, the cyber war, 
next three, four years, they essentially means how one looks at the whole security system and the privacy is something is also uh, would be extremely key in building the new business model. While doing that, um, I think clearly the data aggregator, which now Reserve Bank of India has now introduced, I think post the payment revolution that they brought in on the payment systems. Now data aggregator account aggregator is also now giving a new way of building actually the financial market where every data aggregator would know about every customer in terms of their behavior of dealing with their own finance and the way do a planning of their business and so on and so forth. Therefore, the customer available information availability with the aggregator platform is going to be significantly higher than what you have seen. I have also seen um, the way civil scores have done a revolution in, the, in, in, in making the every consumer behavior understood before extending the uh, loan for any of the customers. I think the same way aggregated platform also has the thing going to drive the entire future world. This is where I think I, my own um, association with UPI, my association with Reserve Bank of India and SEBI in many of the areas that we work very closely. Clearly, I think the regulators themselves are now becoming uh, forward looking in terms of building the business. Uh, just to end, um, I think we can go to the next one. Just to end, um, I just came across this uh, guy, I attended uh, Harvard program sometime back, those dated one. I felt it is relevant. And uh, the, the professor who actually was talking about the digital uh, future, and he, he did actually a survey of the uh, various CEOs. And then the survey, of course, the SNP final CEOs, which they had started thinking sooner than they did about their internet strategy. This is way back. Uh, when the internet study started. And I think five years from now, there will be a number of SNP finance CEOs that will wish they started thinking earlier about their AA strategy. And AA was new electricity, just 100 years ago, electricity was transformed industry after industry. And AA will do the same. I think if you look at the way the entire digital platform is moving, is the artificial intelligence is now becoming the key in terms of building the feature of the business. Therefore, how each of the business is getting adopted I think it will remain, uh, remain a significant, what you call the deciding factor in the future of the organizations. And in fact, I myself come with uh, old age kind of uh, business model building. I think clearly the three, four challenge which I see in terms of building the business is a mindset and the right set of uh, people with again having right mindset. The, the acumen that you should have in terms of working with younger uh, populations versus the older population, all of them actually is becoming a very significant uh, um, role that they play in building a great organizations. In fact, I, I do myself have been encouraging my own team. The best actually that we can do actually is get youngsters as part of the team and make them actually bring in new innovations, what they learn, what they learn, what they do, what they see, on the basis of which actually bring in innovation in everything that we do in building the digital platform. That's something that remains, remains a big area of focus. Of course, for, for doing this, there is always a challenge of the mindset. There's always a challenge of accepting, yes, that's a new way of life. And I think if you're able to overcome that, and definitely I think as an organization, one can build a great a digital world organization for the future. I think I'll stop here. I'm sure uh, you'll have some uh, questions on uh, some of the discussion that I had, even for the industry, that you may have some questions. I'd be happy to take the questions. Uh, so thank you very much, Mr. Balasubramanian, for doing this. And uh, what an apt time to discuss about the future of India and digitalization. Uh, because uh, today in the budget presentation, uh, the finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman, laid a great emphasis over the digital technology and digital transformation of India. But uh, some of the key points which uh, I pick up from uh, the, the budget speech and whatever you have laid down before, the, before our viewers and, and during your presentation, uh, they, th this, there is no uh, doubt that the India is fastly transforming for the, uh, for the digital uh, economy. But there are certain questions which still arises out of uh, you know, the present scenario uh, about the data privacy, about uh, you know, the viability gap. So I would want you to uh, clarify on certain things that where do you see the viability gap lying right now? as far as the space of a digital transformation and the capabilities we uh, should have? That's right. Um, if, 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 you will, if you look at it, the entire adoption that is happening on the digital space, only in the last eight, nine years, I think is India has adopted quite fast, but definitely data, data privacy is something 
where um, the regulatory frameworks are very clear about what kind of what kind of data privacy they want you to have and then what kind of data one can share but given the fact that the entire digital medium um, the data is available generally for the wider usages therefore how uh, this actually is can be can be can be managed is something will remain as a as an evolving process but at the same time the the regulatory framework i think especially in the it and digital space is always a follows first of course you create a platform and then making it accepted to the wider platform and then you bring in the right regular of regulatory framework and that something is not just happening in india even worldwide that's the way the entire regulatory framework has been coming so the one of the area where the data privacy i think would probably increasingly become in the next few years that's why i talked about the risk i think i talked about the risk the eventually one this become the way of life and um, and and that will lead to actually the um, regulator waking up to bring in the right regulatory framework in ensuring that the people who are providing these the services in the digital platform they are also actually made to follow certain rules of the game and so on and so forth in maintaining the data privacy at the end of the day uh, any consumer that is there today of course often i joke to people uh, even within my own team as well that we may think actually we have data privacy we are everything is protected the moment i go and sit in my facebook or uh, google and we must remember that we are being tracked in every moment of our uh, discussions and somebody is tracking here a machine is tracking or maybe somebody is sitting in uh, us is tracking it but the fact of the matter is the moment you get in digital platform you cannot say you are completely you are protected from a privacy point of view somebody no. is tracking it you can only say that yes you will not pull into any kind of controversy unless until uh, you are actually given a hmm. uh, say what do you call uh, an acceptance for certain things for sharing and so on and so forth hmm. uh one more thing arises out of it uh, mr balas subramanian that uh, around 70% of india is still living in the rural areas and only 30% plus uh, is the urban population though it is fastly growing and the estimate says suggest that you know in uh, next 25 years over 50% of the indian population would be in the urban areas but in the current scenario uh, how do you see the digital india actually uh, reaping dividend for the rural population where the main uh, the the uh, money transactions or the large amount of the economic activity lies i think the bigger um, the opportunity rather not, not opportunity i would say the adoption that has happened in the rural economy uh, is first and foremost everyone today is the owner of the smartphone and i think is no more uh, the old phone that people use it so that's the biggest change that has come and really where from i'm coming i do visit my village at least once in a year and then when i go to the school program the people who come actually to stand the parents who come they're all coming from the below poverty line people when they come and actually participate in the program invariably all of them will be will be using the smartphone in taking the video of their kids dance program and so on and so forth that's the biggest change that has come second i think bigger change that has come is actually the adopting the payment methodology but every kirana shows are operating actually in the village if you tell him actually i'll give you a cash or maybe i'll send you an account in your in your bank account i'll transfer the money he'll probably the first question will come do you have paytm do you have google pay do you have phone pay i think that's the first question will come if you say no for all those things then only they give you actually the bank account number that's a bigger change that has come then probably if you ask me the rural connect the rural india has now got connected they even bharti came with the mobile phone in the early part of 90s the people who adopted to the mobile telephone in the country are the fishermen of kerala so they were the one actually where the you go to actually fish uh, fishing in the middle of the sea and suddenly you want to check the price the price is good you fish for do a fishing for more time if the price is not that great you come back and then sell whatever you have you have already captured and that's where they used to use it it became actually a good case study i think if you ask me the bigger revolution that has happened in the country is actually the payment uh, usages in the country using the uh, payment app i think a significant touch when there has come the third that has come i think thanks to uh, the way the road sector uh, now we now got um, Uh, which is the fast track uh, this is another area where every 
uh, rural India is they today through connected to the road, and uh, every citizen of the country has to go through the toll naka, uh, which used to be of course operated out of manual by taking cash. Now that the fast tag that has come, in fact, uh, the adoption of fast tag in the country actually one of the highest. This is another area where uh, the consumers are using. So I think what I am trying to say. The number of people actually come to the digital platform knowingly or unknowingly, using this kind of platform, which now became a necessity, is I think growing significantly, and they eventually become potential uh, target audience uh, when it comes to the question of uh, digital marketing and so on and so forth. Uh, definitely, I would want to uh, to repeat what you have already mentioned that uh, though we Indians start late, but we are very fast learners, and with the pace of adoption, it's really uh, remarkable. Uh, when you are with us, I cannot resist the temptation to ask you the question, being like you being the most uh, experienced fund manager in the country. So, uh, how has been the success of the tech companies, tech startups in India, as far as the India's investment scenario and in, in the the market scenario is concerned? Uh, how optimistic you are about the startups uh, and their success, especially uh, the the tech startups and the drone companies or AI or uh, the you know the the technology based startups. I think Pranay is interesting. There is a significant mindset change that has now come to uh, fund the startup companies uh, in the sense that any companies uh, that actually is going to change in many sense the life of the consumers in, a, in any manner or the way I think the business is being built that can get fully automated, therefore you are creating a tool um, or it can actually create a tool that actually potentially be a buyout candidates when people like Amazon actually build the firms, not necessarily Amazon will build all the things that they want by themselves. They will also do an inorganic growth actually for them to actually build in the API platform, building a lot of connectivity. Therefore, the attempt that is being made by youngsters is actually far higher uh, in terms of uh, creating a startup company. Second is clearly from a money manager's point of view, the mindset actually towards looking at such kind of uh, companies as long as they make it relevant. I think one of the areas where even money money is start looking at, even I myself start looking at some of the startup companies or maybe companies which is not early stage, but at the late stage now coming as an IPO. Really one of the bigger learning from them is actually are they making big relevance from the consumer point of view? What kind of impact they are going to create from a consumer point of view? How the platform actually is going to be made, uh, made, to, made to use again from the consumer point of view. I think as long as the relevance remains very, very large, Definitely, the appetite for investing in such startup is very, very high. Often, people ask me, I have seen the internet bubble time. In those period, all of us were extremely excited. And we used to go and put money in the startup companies uh, without knowing about the theory of the companies. People in the days of the eyeballs hit. And um, even my own colleagues, some of them started, they all became great failures. I think moving from that actually to the, this new age platform is actually is, is different from what it was in the past. I think it's completely. Uh, refined, refined version with the relevance being one of the core things. It's not about the profit, it's about the relevance. And that's the way I think it's coming. Clearly, we are in that wave. My own assumption is uh, uh, given the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, India is actually a great adopter. Uh, we, I, I used to come and tell my colleagues the Jugard way of doing business also will bring you a great success and innovation. And um, if I have to go by that, and given the fact that Indians are generally uh, fixing solution based on Johar ways eventually become a nice innovations that can potentially become a nice uh, startup uh, in many sense that one can look at it. So that's why I see is I think the appetite is growing and youngsters are now don't want to work and they want actually um, start uh, have startup companies they want to build. I think that's something the risk appetite fortunately has gone up quite substantially. So one more so area I would want to touch upon uh, the finance minister has also laid uh, down the emphasis on the artificial intelligence, gaming, virtual creativity. And you also mentioned about the media and advertising sector. Uh, with the growing digitization, how do you see uh, the market growth and the new dimensions opening for the advertising in the media sector, since we are sharing this platform uh, because of the exchange for media and dance's effort? No, I am quite um, bullish on this space, um, um, except that I'm only uh, of, of the opinion I think the way we build the re re response to the consumers or uh, speed to the market, speed to the consumers, I think it will move away from spending too much time on creativity of say uh, one month and two months kind of creative work. I think probably will now move to hours. 
And I, I just, why I'm specifically saying this is I came across a startup company based out of uh, Europe and I was at uh, a group did a two day session on seeing lots of companies in the business, business lab, we call it a lot of companies made a presentation from a startup, including some of the overseas companies. I think clearly the advertisement world is actually is picking up from the digital platform itself and creating advertisement for quick response uh, in the, in the, uh, as part of the media strategy. My own belief is the entire, the digital medium response by view of creative work, I think will move away from a number of days actually to hours so that consumer is able to get an instantaneous response in the form of not responding in the form of uh, responding to him, even the form of positioning the right advertisements uh, through the latest creation and so on and so forth. That I think today technology uh, is enabling that. The only the more is the question of AI model, how one is able to use that. I think that's why I think some amount of deeper brain and brainstorming and thinking would play a role. And in fact, even as an MP chairman, I'm driving actually the Mitchell Penn Sayer next level, the larger thinking that we have today is actually is not only, of course, taking the um, extra of advertisement to the regional languages, also think about how we can actually connect to the, uh, connect to the people using the publicly available information uh, at the same time, uh, uh, maintain the privacy and, 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 and data for protective protection, et cetera, and yet create, come with the creative work. Uh, using the publicly available information itself, purely with the consumer behavior. Uh, certainly, it gives a very optimistic uh, scenario and optimistic, uh, you know, outlook for the digital ready, transformed India. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, your presentation, and uh, now I hand over the platform to to Michelle and and Team Dance and uh, Exchange for Media. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Pranay. Thanks for having me on the part of the show. <laughs>